Hi everyone and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today we're going to be doing some simple brush painted and sponge applied chipping on the striker. Now this is a little bit different than my previous approaches because the striker has a newer paint job and it's not been as heavily used or beaten up as a World War II vehicle or even an IDF vehicle like we did last time. I'm going to do this a lot more gently and do less steel chips, more just wear and tear scrapes and nicks with lighter colors. Now, you can do it any way you want, but I'm only going to do a couple little tiny chips on the ceramic tiles and then on the sides, barely anything. This is my choice for this vehicle. I think that would be accurate uh, for the application, but definitely other vehicles would probably be beaten up more, especially for like an Abrams or something, because that's going to be in a lot more of a combat rich environment, whereas this would probably be standing off firing shells into a hostile environment, not being in it itself. But as you can see, I'm just taking the standard sponge chipping approach, first applying it with the sponge and then going around and outlining panels and redefining some smaller chips as we go with a brush. Now, this is Night Shift's technique, and I want to make sure you guys know that um, just to give him credit for it because it's a great technique, and um, I found it's it's great to use, at least in my experience. But if this doesn't work for you, you can always use a hairspray chipping technique or something like that. This is what I have found works for me. So, as you can see, chipping it up with a sponge and then going in and outlining panels and uh, little details with a brush and the same color paint. Now this paint is about 50-50 American dark green and yellow, and then <clears throat> a little bit of white to lighten it up after that. I don't have exact measurements or ratios for it, but you guys can kind of estimate. You'll see what I'm going for is just a noticeably lighter shade than our base color or even our highlight color um, for the chips because Obviously, you want them to stand out. Now, after that, I'm going to go in with some gray. Um, this will work for the ceramic armor and the steel chips. And I'm going to outline some panels, but I'm going to be very... I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to hit a couple areas that would be really damaged, um, or some larger chips. And if you do mess up on the chips, make them too large or something, you can always go in with a toothpick, and it'll loosen up the paint, and then you can kind of blend it in. Uh, and make it fade back out of your focus. Obviously this doesn't get rid of all of it in my experience, but it'll get rid of most of it and it'll make it so that you don't really notice it until you're looking very closely, which most of our friends and IPMS judges wouldn't. But you can see it's a really simple process, just outlining different panels with the lighter color after using a sponge to get those jagged chips. After that, we fill it in with the gray color in the largest of chips. On a older steel vehicle, like one in World War II, that would be a lot more beaten up in a frontline active role. I'd be a lot more heavy handed with the steel chips, but here I'm only doing a couple on the ceramic plates and barely any on any steel surfaces. One of my favorite parts about chipping up this striker is that for some of the places where I messed up on the anti-slip, it was chipped through to the lower plastic plates, which would have been ceramic in real life. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lighter green color around the chipped area, just to show that it's actually been chipped up and like damaged around that area. And then I'm going to fill it in with light gray ceramic color, or you know, like to simulate the ceramic color. Um, and then I'm going to wet blend in darker grays and add a bit of a modeled effect just to add interest to there because we can't really add rust effects to a ceramic plate, obviously. But yeah, you can see that I'm adding darker grays and then wet blending them in.
After that, I started working on the tow bars that I mounted to the side of the stowage cage. Now, these would be used pretty heavily and they would have been dinged up quite a bit, so I wasn't afraid to go all out on weathering these pretty hard with the sponge chipping. And then the ones that looked kind of unrealistic or there are too many in one spot, I erased those with water like right afterwards because if you've got a good varnish coat down, you're able to kind of take away whatever you want from your chipping job. After I had revised those with the water, I went in and highlighted edges and established some more of the larger chips a little bit better just so they popped a bit more and looked a bit more realistic. I then went in with steel chips and this time I didn't really hold back too much because I knew that this would be chipped through quite a bit just because of how often it was used and in the way that it was used. After that, I went in with some burnt umber oil paints and made the entire tow bar pretty rusty looking. I applied a lot here just to get an even coverage and then I wiped some of it away with mineral spirits just so it was a lighter coverage but it still had an orange tinge over the whole thing. I felt like this was the most realistic way to do this and the nice thing about these oil paints is that they dried semi-matte, probably more satin just so it helped unify that piece and make it look a little different from the rest of the model. For the sides, you can see that I just did a ton of tiny little chips all over the place, just like it was banged into or rubbed against, but nothing that went through the paint. And you can see that I used the same technique where I used the sponge first to get tiny chips and then went in with a paintbrush and highlighted edges and stuff like that. Again, for the steel parts that you got a lot of wear, I used the same burnt umber oil paint and painted it on and then wiped away the excess with mineral spirits. This was the best way to do it, I feel like, just because I could get all of it covered at once and then we can thin it down and remove as much as we want up to the point where we feel like it's realistic looking. Now this next part is gonna probably catch me a little bit of flack in the comments but I feel like my results are well justified um, and my process kind of matches what I think should be showing up on these tanks if they were to get this weathered. So <clears throat> the base color is bronze green for a striker and the anti-slip underneath is kind of a like tan yellow color. So I'm using very thinned yellow oil paint on the parts that were chipped all the way through to the ceramic because I feel like, like with the Zimmerit application, it would leave some residue behind. It's a brighter color and it looks a little bit too much when you're first looking at it as it's wet, but trust me, it'll fade down and you'll be able to see in the final pictures that it actually looks pretty realistic. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, since it helps me out a ton if you do. Also, a massive thank you to my Patreon subscribers. You guys are absolutely fantastic and keep me motivated to keep producing content like this. If you want to join them, it would mean the world to me if you'd follow the link in the card on screen now or in the description below. You guys can get awesome perks like instant messaging with me and frequent workbench updates that explain what I'm doing as well as a detailed look at the thought process behind it weeks or even months before you'll see a video on it. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.